More now on the breaking news this hour. The State Department says it is reducing staffing levels at the U.S. Embassy in Kyiv, citing reports Russia is planning significant military action against Ukraine. Russia has massed more than 100,000 troops at its border with Ukraine, despite repeated conversations with Western leaders aimed at easing the crisis. The State Department says the embassy departures are voluntary, with diplomats, families, and non-essential embassy staff being the first to go. We should note, though, uh, that the, the family members of the staff there, they are being ordered to go. CNN National Security Correspondent Kylie Atwood joins me now. So, Kylie, what more can you tell us about what was behind this move? Yeah, I think there are a lot of questions, Pam, about why the State Department did this now. And senior State Department officials just spoke on a call uh, with reporters to explain that this decision came out of an abundance of caution. So it's basically what they said is the totality of the situation uh, with Russia continuing uh, its efforts to destabilize Ukraine, its military buildup along the borders. Those are the factors that went into this decision for them to, as you said, authorize the departure of some U.S. government employees and to order the departure of the families of those U.S. government employees at the embassy in Kyiv. So there's not necessarily a, a heightened uh, risk that those U.S. personnel are in today versus yesterday, but they do feel that the totality of the situation made it so that they should start allowing and then, of course, telling some of those Americans to get out. Um, so that's you know, the gist of this here. But there is another aspect of it, which is American citizens who are in the country. And the State Department is essentially encouraging them to leave, telling them to avail themselves of commercial options. Excuse me. Um, they won't say exactly how many Americans have registered with the State Department um, as being in Ukraine right now. Uh, they said that that's because they think that providing that information just wouldn't be helpful at this time because Americans aren't required to share that information. But it was uh, really noteworthy that the department was very clear in saying that Biden, the president, is not going to be evacuating U.S. citizens if Russia invades Ukraine. So if they want to leave the country, those Americans who are there on their own accord, they should start looking for commercial options now. Okay, Kylie Atwood, thank you for that. I want to bring back Democratic Congresswoman Elaine Loria. Uh, so what is your reaction to this decision? We just heard Kylie Atwood break down uh, what was behind this, saying that they are doing this out of an abundance of caution. What do you make of it? Well, you know, I'd say that there are obviously rising tensions. We've been uh, all in on negotiations to uh, attempt uh, to get Russia to back down with 100,000 troops on the border. Um, and, you know, I think that we are, you know, seeking pressure on Russia to, to try to convince them and it's not in their benefit to invade Ukraine. But, you know, those civilians who, who were embassy um, and U.S. civilians within uh, Ukraine, it, it's very important that the U.S. government has a plan uh, to help those people uh, get to safety. And I actually wrote a letter this week with one of my colleagues um, to the administration saying, you know, what is the plan? We've had briefings as Congress from the Department of Defense. And, you know, I really want to make sure um, that there is a, a good, solid plan to, to be able to re react and, and get those Americans out um, if, you know, Russia does decide to take this drastic measure. We keep hearing the uh, U.S. officials say that they are ready to, to impose severe consequences if Russia moves in. Um, but we have seen an uptick in activity from the U.S. in terms of giving aid to Ukraine. Now you have this move um, at the embassy there in Ukraine. Do you think we could see a change in the U.S. response to Russia now that they've scaled back personnel at their embassy in Ukraine? Well, what I say is that we need to provide the maximum security assistance as quickly as possible. We did 60 million. We've authorized an additional 200 million. You can see um, that you know additional uh, shipments um, of defensive weapons are being delivered to Ukraine um, as we speak. That happened today, um, and you know I'm also uh, aware that there's reporting from the administration very recently um, that the United States is reinforcing its number of troops though, within NATO um, in the areas uh, of Eastern Europe and near Ukraine, and really the the stick, you know, if you're going to talk about a carrot and a stick is, you know, we've been very clear um, that there'll be severe consequences from the U.S. and U.S. allies if 
Russia does decide to invade Ukraine. And I think this could come in the form of very, very draconian um, sanctions. Um, and, you know, I think that, you know, there's also the, the concern um, about the, the pipeline um, in Germany and the impacts that that could have on, on Russia as well. We're also learning that China sent 39 warplanes into Taiwan's air defense zone on Sunday. Do you think the Biden administration has been doing enough with the escalating tension with China? Well, you know, this is an issue I, I follow very closely. I spent 20 years in the Navy myself, had numerous opportunities to deploy to the Western Pacific, I actually visited with the U.S. Indo-PACOM commander earlier this year. And what I would say is that every single day is truly a gray zone conflict in the Pacific. And, you know, from my opinion, I think that we're not doing enough. I think that we need to be building our Navy. We need to deploy our forces differently. We need to truly have a deterrent within the region. And I think that, you know, the current U.S. policy um, a strategic ambiguity is not enough. I think we need to make it very clear that the United States policy should change to be that we will react in order to maintain the status quo. And All I right. think it is time All for right. that.